Hey everyone, I'm Joshua Oral, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. Now, today is going to be the last blog I'm going to make before I fly on vacation to Manhattan. And for something this special, I want it to be an animal film that takes place there. Now, for those who don't, well, aren't familiar with my work, throughout the years, I blogged several different animal films that were set in that big city. 80s classics like An American Tale and Oliver and Company, blockbusters like Peter Jackson's King Kong, disasters like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from 2014, underrated films like Mr. Peabody and Sherman, and of course the recent masterpiece, The Secret Life of Pets. However, today's blog is something that I consider to be an underrated classic from my childhood, which involves friendly, intelligent dinosaurs in New York City. So, let's get started. Released on November 24th, 1993, the movie is We Are Back, A Dinosaur Story. Now, on with the blog. Four fun-loving dinosaurs take a trip to New York City, courtesy of Captain New Eyes, who is intent on bringing joy to the lives of the children of the Big Apple. After eating a breakfast cereal to boost their smarts and cuddliness, Tyrannosaurus Rex, Triceratops Woog, Pterodactyl Elsa, and Hadrosaur Dweeb hit the big town and meet two young children. But... Trouble soon arise when New Eyes' evil and insane brother hatches a devious plot. So, what do I think? Well, when I was little, I barely watched this film due to the fact that I watched it a couple times at daycare. But luckily, in summer 2005, I was able to watch it at my scout friend Philip's house, and several months after renting it from Netflix, I bought my own copy from Amazon, and, well, nowadays, I enjoy it these days as I did when I was a child. But before I explain why I enjoy this film, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Production and development for the movie began at Universal Studios in Universal City near Los Angeles, California, and Emblemation in London, England, in May 1989 which is at the time American Tale Fible Goes West was also in production. As in a five-year production schedule, it takes four years for the film to be made. Now, in my opinion, the animation for this movie is pretty good at highlighting the certain locations in New York City. For example, the streets, along with the people out and about, along with Central Park, which looks really dark and eerie. And of course, the, muse the Museum of Natural History, which is really spot on. Also, some of the skyscrapers have a bit of CGI in them. Also, the late Cretaceous scene at the beginning may not show too much, but it still looks pretty good. As for the dinosaurs themselves, well, when they're rough and wild, they look almost like dinosaurs that Don Bluth would draw. And when they are very smart and friendly, they look pretty cartoony. But that doesn't mean I don't like it, though. Now, to move on to the music. Well, most of us already know that the music is done by the late James Horner. But I want to talk about the song in the movie, which is called Roll Back the Rock, sung by Rex while he and his friends are marching through the Thanksgiving parade. In my opinion, it's a really catchy song, and it even gets me clapping and tapping my feet to it, even wants me to get to sing along with it. I especially love when the kids sing it like a chorus. But my favorite scenes in this film, other than the Thanksgiving parade, are the police chase, which ends in a huge explosion, and of course, Screwwise's demon parade. Now that we got Mustang notes out of the way, Let's move on to the characters and their voice actors. Let's begin with the leader of the dinosaurs, Rex, voiced by my favorite actor, John Goodman. 
Known for the Monsters, Inc. films, as well as The Emperor's New Groove, The Jungle Book 2, and of course, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the movie. Now, I love Rex. Not just because of John Goodman's voice for him, but he's really fun, friendly, and loyal. I also like that he looks out for his friends, including the children that he, they meet in the movie. My favorite scene that he's involved with happens to be the part during the police chase where he uses a truck as a skateboard to rescue his friends from the police. Next we have Woog, the Triceratops, voiced by Rene Levant. I like him too. I find it to be pretty funny that he has an appetite for hot dogs, despite the fact that he's supposed to be a herbivore. Next we have Elsa, the pterodactyl, voiced by Felicity Kendall. In my opinion, she's a great character too. Her flying scenes are absolutely magnificent. But I find it kind of weird that she flirts with Rex sometimes. However, I know for a fact that she does not like being called a bat. Trust me. Next we have Dweeb, the Hadrasar, voiced by Charles Flesher. Known for being in Hoof Brain Roger Rabbit. Now, I don't have much to say other than the fact that in my eyes, Dweeb has got to be the funniest character out of all the dinosaurs. Next we come to Louie, voiced by Joey Shia. This young lad is a real street smart kid. In my opinion, I like his tough New York personality, along with his wrath that he was using on the Brooklyn River. The part that I find him to be pretty relatable is where he wished via bubble for a friend. But the part that I find pretty peculiar is his excuse for running away. What, and what was it, you ask? Well... It was because he was embarrassed of his mom kissing him in public. But aside from that weird excuse for running away, well, I also find the part where he risks his life and uses his friendship to save Rex and his gang. Next is Cecilia Nuthatch, voiced by Yardley Smith. A.K.A. Lisa Simpson from, well... The Simpsons. <sighs> well, anyway. <clears throat> what I like about her is that she's really cute and sweet. And I just love the shots where she smiles at Louie. Plus, in my opinion, she and Louie make a great kid couple. And, well, <clears throat> the reason why she ran away is because she feels neglected. Because her parents are barely around, even at parent nights or at Thanksgiving. Next we come to Captain New Eyes, voiced by the late news broadcaster, Walter Cronkite. Who teamed up with Robin Williams in Disney's Back to Neverland short at Disney Hollywood Studios in Florida. Now, this guy with the help from his alien sidekick, Vorb, is responsible for bringing Rex and the other dinosaurs smart and taking them to New York City. He's counting on them to go to the Museum of Natural History and meet countless children. What I like about him is his goal to grant children's wishes and making them happy. I also like that he uses a wish radio in order to listen to what children are wishing for. Kind of like something that Walt Disney would do. Plus, his time traveling machine is really cool. And I also like that he uses his famous quote, which is, of course, and that's the way it is. We also have Dr. Juliet Bleev, voiced by Julia Child. She runs the Museum of Natural History. While she doesn't appear too much in the movie, Mostly what she does is post, 
posters all over New York while she waits for the dinosaurs to arrive. Finally, we come to New Eyes' brother and villain for the film, Professor Screw Eyes, voiced by the late Kenneth Mars. Known for being in Mel Brooks' Young Frankenstein and Disney's The Little Mermaid. Screw Eyes is the ringmaster of an eccentric circus in Central Park. In my opinion, he's pretty similar, but different compared to Mr. Dark from Something Wicked This Way Comes, but way crazier. He was driven mad by the loss of his eye years ago, and he's been causing mischief for some time. So, how did he lose his eye, you may ask? Well, according to a deleted scene, a crow pecked him while he was, tr while he was trying to get a berry. Unfortunately, we don't see that because it was cut from the movie on the grounds that it was too intense for younger children. Anyway, while I do like that he's putting on a horror-themed circus, what he does that makes him villainous is having the kids sign a contract in blood. Gee, and I thought Umbridge from Harry Potter 5 was nuts with that. Anyway, what's more, he keeps a whole flock of crows with him, and he has his own radio known as the Fright Radio, which broadcasts what children are scared of. He also uses brain drain pills, which not only reverts Rex and the gang back to their wild and monstrous selves, but also turns the kids into monkeys. And what's more, his screw eye can mesmerize anybody. But, not many people know that his biggest fear is being alone. And now it's time to move on to my final words. Overall, We're Back, A Dinosaur Story may not hold up that well to several folks out there, but I still find this to be a pretty underrated film, and a cult classic at that. Aside from the strange plot, it has a great cast of characters, from the dinosaurs to the children, it has good animation for the time, and also a good moral, though one part of the movie may be a bit dark, so... If you folks would like to watch something decent, or something to show to your kids, then by all means, you should check this movie out if you want. I give this film a rating of 77% out of 100. Well, that's it for today, viewers. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta, gotta go get myself prepared for my flight to New York. But fear not. I'll be home next week, so be sure to join me for my next blog as soon as I get home from my vacation. Mustang Power! Last night I had a crazy dream I fell out of my bed I missed the floor entirely I fell through time instead Through yesterday and history And unrecorded time A hundred million years flew by To measures